Your commentator is Fulton Lewis, Jr. The grim struggle to clear the Atlantic sea lanes goes on. Crushing sea and air weapons of the American, English, and Canadian navies blast Nazi wolf packs that continue to harass the Allied traffic lane. A slinking raider comes to the surface and is sighted. Unaware of impending danger, the U boat moves in for the kill. The veteran crew of a United States Coast Guard cutter attacks. But the submarine fires its last telling shot. heroes day by day send more of Hitler's undersea marauders to the bottom. Another U-boat has just been sunk. What remains of its crew struggles for life. Often they perish, but sometimes they surmount the rigors of surging seas and are picked up by Allied warcraft. Their next stop is an internment camp. The fatal end of what once was one of the world's largest navies. The French fleet fails to heed the plea of the Allies to escape to North Africa, but to prevent the mighty Armada from falling into Hitler's hands, the fleet is scuttled. Magnificent dreadnoughts, cracked cruisers, mighty submarines are burned and blown up before the very eyes of the infuriated Nazis. The fleet dies that France may live again. Nineteen forty-one, the United States Navy seizes the mighty French liner Normandy. 1942, fire destroys the once proud queen of the Atlantic. 1943, the greatest ship salvage operation of all time begins. The Normandy rises, France that will rise again. American air power blasts the Japs from the skies in the island stronghold of the South Pacific. In the Solomons, Jap transports are sunk almost as fast as they appear. General Douglas MacArthur personally commands the terrific struggle to annihilate the barbarous Japs. Again and again, our paratroopers harass the sons of the setting sun. The fighting general flies into battle with our intrepid airmen. Objective reached, the paratroopers bail out. The first four-star general to lead a sky attack. Continuous airborne invasions throughout the South Pacific place MacArthur's men in the rear of the Japs. Their escape is made impossible. Land forces fighting for every inch of ground trap thousands of Japs in dense tropical jungles. The Mikado's little monkey men are trapped in furious attacks on air bases. Treacherous Jap snipers are burned alive by infuriated natives. These sons of heaven decide to remain on earth for another bowl of rice. On the North Burma front, the veteran Lieutenant General Joe Stilwell moves in with his American-trained and equipped Chinese forces, fighting incessantly to hold vital positions on the Salween River until Burma can be retaken. Here, an almost forgotten front in the global war ties down a big Japanese army. defeated by the Japs in Burma, General Stilwell fights on and trains a growing army to reconquer it. The city of Buenos Aires roars with disorder and rioting as the army overthrows the government of Ramon Castillo. Axis sympathizes. The overwhelming majority of the Argentine people seek closer hemispheric ties, but against their will and mandate, the army takes them from the frying pan into the fire.
Casablanca, President and Prime Minister salute the men who fight and must win this war. The unconditional surrender of the Axis is planned and perfected by the Joint Military High Command. Surrender of Tripoli brings Mussolini's North African Empire to an end. General Montgomery's heroic army chases Rommel's Africa Corps from the gates of Egypt. Churchill flies to Tripoli to hail the glorious achievement of Montgomery's fighting 8th Army. The desert battle heroes cheer the symbol of the Allies' will to win. Under American General Dwight D. Eisenhower, battle-tested Americans, British, Canadians, and French leap from Tunisia to Sicily. Losses from Nazi sky raiders fail to stop Eisenhower's push toward Hitler's fortress Europe. Off Salerno, the United States cruiser Savannah suffers a direct bomb hit. A turret is knocked out and there are casualties in the gun crew. The Savannah's heroic men continue to shell the beach as the American Fifth Army invades Italy. Italy surrenders. Salerno is won. Allied armies march on Naples and Rome to tear down the double cross of continental Europe. The invasion of Italy weakens Nazi strength on the Russian front. Americans and Canadians capture Italian towns street by street. Naples is taken. All Nazi Germany trembles with every Allied advance to the north, certain to bring vast new areas of the Hitler homeland more and more within reach of crushing air bombardment. Terror grips every German city when British and American bombers roar over those white cliffs of Dover and cross the channel to the coast of conquered France. The shattering air offensive reaches a terrific peak such as the world has never known. The staggering weight of the growing American air power hastens the day of victory. offensive, sustained a tremendous tempo for months, the avenging Red Armies sweep the Nazis out of the Ukraine and into a catastrophe that shakes all Germany to her sinister foundation. They shoot down counter-attacking Nazis with savage joy. The passionate fury of the Soviets is symbolized by the flaming banner of fire and steel under which they fight. Here on the crimson Russian steppes of the Dnieper River bend, Hitler's hordes are annihilated as powerful red spearheads seal the fate of thousands of German troops. Mopping up back of the advancing armies, a Russian soldier calls on hidden Nazis to surrender as Hitler's doomsday draws near. A staggering blow to Nazi hopes of allied disunity is contributed when Secretary of State Hull flies to Moscow, an historic prelude to victory.